There is an ancient Egyptian monument, and they are preparing a dictionary based on all the inscriptions there. They found a historical document confirming this event. It is on display in the Dutch National Museum today, Ipuer Papyrus. Prophet Moses Musa, peace be upon him, and a king claiming to be God opposite him, around him are the sons of Israel, who turn their backs on him on many occasions and are ungrateful. Allah gives him a task that almost no one can undertake. He will go to the king who claims to be a god. He will say that the king is not a god but equal to a slave. He will say, there is only one creator of the heavens and the earth, and you will prostrate before that god. It's something incredible. Upon the command of Allah, he sets out with the prophet Aaron, Harun, peace be upon him. A long and difficult struggle begins. Scholars learned lessons from this story in every century and narrated them. But some lessons have come to light only in the past 200 years. With the development of archaeology, historiography, and research, some miracles of the Quran have recently come to light. Today, we're going to deal with four of those miracles together. Let's start. In the middle of the story, while thinking about how to confront Moses, peace be upon him, Pharaoh gave an order to one of his men. It is narrated as follows in verse 38 of the chapter of al qasas And Pharaoh said, O courtiers, I do not recognize any god for you other than me. So kindle for me, O Haman, a fire on the clay, and build for me a tower, so that I may look on to the god of Musa, Moses, peace be upon him. I deem him to be one of the liars. There is a very interesting miracle in the verse above. According to the verse, a man named Haman is close to Pharaoh. The name is also mentioned in five other places in the Quran. If we consider the order that Pharaoh gave him, it is understood that he was responsible for construction works and quarries, giving historical information that we couldn't otherwise know, and being able to mention the person's name and profession in detail is not something that a liar could do. That is, if Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had been a liar, it would have been impossible for him to take such a risk by making such a statement. But the real thing is yet to come. This name of Haman is also mentioned in the Torah, but the person mentioned in the Torah as Haman is not even Egyptian, let alone in charge of construction. He is the vizier of the Persian king. There is a vast difference. Who is Haman then? If we ask archaeology this question, the answer shows us two important things. The first is that the Quran is the word of Allah, and the second is that it is in no way taken from the Bible and the Torah. How? Like this. The Persians invaded Egypt in 333 BC. After this invasion, Alexander the Great occupied it. He made Greek the official language. Over time, the Egyptian language gradually disappeared due to different factors. And after 300 AD, no one could speak that language anymore. I mean, those hieroglyphs you see, writings with pictures and symbols, the meanings of all of them were erased from the earth until the 19th century when Napoleon went on the expedition to Egypt in 1799. He took some researchers with him. They found an interesting historical artifact there, an inscribed stone called the Rosetta Stone. What made it important was this. They wrote the same text on it in three different languages, Greek, hieroglyphic, and Demotic script. Since Greek was known, the other texts started to be analyzed based on Greek. The basis for deciphering those hieroglyphs of Egypt started there. They attained great knowledge. The language of hieroglyphs was deciphered in a very short time. Thus, we crossed paths with Haman after many years. Where? In the Hof Museum in Vienna. There is a monument there. It is an ancient Egyptian monument, and they prepared a dictionary based on all the inscriptions there. In the Dictionary of People in the New Kingdom, Haman is also mentioned. Guess what he is mentioned as? Head of Quarries! How is he mentioned in the Quran? Remember the verse above. So kindle for me, O Haman, a fire on the clay, and build for me a tower. That is, Pharaoh addressed nobody else but directly the head of the quarries by his name. He wanted him to build a tower for him. Well, is it possible for the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, to know this without Allah informing him? We are talking about a language that was erased from the world 200 years before his birth. So there is no point in addressing that question. Allah has mentioned such a thing in the Quran that proves that the Quran belongs to him and spiritually says, I know word for word what you were talking about, even about places you call the depth of history. Besides, this Haman issue shows how false the claim the Quran quoted from the Bible and the Torah is. If it had quoted from them, it wouldn't have mentioned Haman. Or, as the Torah states, it would have mentioned him as the vizier of the Persian king. The Quran does not do either. It responds to that slander by showing its miraculousness. When Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Aaron Harun, peace be upon him, first went to invite Pharaoh to believe, Pharaoh did not believe and told his magicians to oppose Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. When they saw the miracles given by Allah to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, the magicians believed in Allah, but Pharaoh and those around him did not believe. 
To make them come to their senses, Allah inflicted that community with different disasters and misfortunes. After that, Pharaoh said to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, O Moses, pray to your Lord to remove these disasters and misfortunes from us, then I will believe too. Allah gave them the opportunity. After the prayer of Moses, peace be upon him, Allah removed the disasters, but Pharaoh still did not believe. Those disasters are described in verses 130 and 133 of the chapter of Al-Araf. The following is stated in those verses. We punished the people of Pharaoh with years of droughts and shortness of crops that they might receive admonition. In verse 133, so we sent on them the flood, the locust, the lice, the frogs, and the blood manifest signs, yet they remained arrogant, and they were of those people who were mujrimun. It is also fascinating that in the archaeological discoveries made in the last 200 years, they found a historical document confirming this event, which we already know. It is exhibited in the Dutch National Museum today, Ipure Papyrus. It is described as follows. Let's read it together again. Disasters covered the whole country. There was blood everywhere. The river became blood. It is related to the blood disaster in the verse. Everything I saw yesterday was destroyed. Every land is bare as if it has been mown. Drought and crop destruction. Lower Egypt has been destroyed. The whole palace is desolate. It mentions directly about the palace. Everything owned, wheat and barley, geese and fish, crops were destroyed everywhere. There was no exit from the palace for nine days, and no one could see that person's face. For example, this detail sounded very interesting to me. Cities were raised to the ground by strong currents, referring to the flood disaster in the verse. Upper Egypt was devastated. There was blood everywhere. Epidemics broke out in the country. Nobody can go north to Biblos today. What are we going to do for our mummies? Gold is decreasing. People have become afraid of water. They were thirsty even after drinking water. Here is our water, our happiness. What can we do? Everything was plundered. Cities were destroyed. Upper Egypt dried up. Settlements were turned upside down within a minute. In other words, the papyrus clearly describes what the Quranic verses describe. Imagine diseases, blood disaster, flood, no one leaving the palace, famine, crops drying up, everything being plundered in a minute. The last two are related to the disasters of grasshoppers and pests. So this historical document reveals two important things. The first, Quranic verses miraculously reported this issue. The second, we have historical documents from that period about the miracles of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. For all these disasters to come together in such a short time, Allah must have punished that society. In other words, this papyrus reveals that the concept of prophethood is true through the miracles of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. In a part of the story, Allah orders Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, to leave Egypt together with those who believed in him. Since Pharaoh did not want that, they had to leave secretly at night. After a while, Pharaoh realized this and went after them with his soldiers. Finally, when Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, arrived in front of the sea, it is called the Red Sea, but its name is not mentioned in any verse or other source, he, peace be upon him, realized that Pharaoh was approaching. Try to imagine it. A sea like the army of Pharaoh in front of him, peace be upon him, and an army of Pharaoh like the sea behind him, peace be upon him. While Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, was in despair, thinking that there must be a way, Allah said to him, strike the sea with your staff. And when he struck the sea, a miracle happened. The sea split in two, and the believers began to cross the sea along with Moses, peace be upon him. Pharaoh followed them, but could not catch them. While Moses, peace be upon him, crossed the sea, Pharaoh was still in the middle of it, trying to catch up with Moses, peace be upon him. And then the sea started to close gradually. The verses continue as follows. Finally, when Pharaoh was about to drown, he said, I believe that there is no God but the one in whom the children of Israel believe, and I am among those who submit to Allah. But his belief was not accepted. The verse continues as follows. Allah said, Is it now that you have come to believe while you were rebellious all along and you were among the mischief makers? Then some news from the future is given as a miracle. So today we shall save your body so that you may become a sign for those after you. And many of the people are heedless of our signs. Now we move on in history and look at the last 200 years. Important discoveries confirm this news about the future. A papyrus, an ancient written paper exhibited today in the British Museum in England, was found during excavations in Egypt. It states an official of the palace wrote a letter to another official and informed him that Pharaoh had drowned. Ancient Egypt was a state that did not accept defeat easily, and as a state, it could delete historical writings when it wanted. But a letter from that period clearly reveals that incident. Let's read it together. From Amenamini, keeper of the white room of the palace, master of books, to Pentero the scribe. When this letter reaches you and is read line by line, learning about the pathetic disaster, the disasters of drowning in the waves that will afflict your heart. 
surrendered your heart like a leaf before a hurricane to the most severe suffering. The calamity was severe, and necessity suddenly ceased it. Pay attention here. Sleep in the water has done the living being pitiful thing. Describe the death of chiefs, the lord of tribes. Describe the destruction of the king of the east and west. Come on. The news I sent you can be compared to what news? This inscription clearly states that the Egyptian pharaoh had drowned in the sea. It also confirms the news given by the Quran, but the issue here is the Quran gave some news about the future related to this event. So today, we shall save your body. Why? So that you may become a sign for those after you. In other words, according to the Quran, 1. Pharaoh's body will not decay after drowning or after centuries. 2. It will be shown and exhibited to people in the future. In 1799, when Napoleon went on the expedition to Egypt, they discovered an ancient region called the Valley of Kings in Egypt. The characteristic of this region is as follows. The dead bodies of pharaohs who are thought to have lived in the time of Moses, peace be upon him, were found there. Think about it this way. If Pharaoh's body had come to the shore a short while after he was drowned, not centuries later, it would have been noticed and taken by the people of the palace, and it would have been embalmed and buried in his own tomb where the other kings were. With the work of archaeologists like John Gardner Wilkinson over time, all those bodies are exhibited in England, France, and Cairo, Egypt to dozens of people every day in different museums. Now think of this discovery and consider this. The Egyptian language disappeared from the world two to three hundred years before the revelation of the Quran. We talked about this earlier. In other words, for many reasons, such as the occupation of Egypt, there were no people who spoke this language. That is, there was no understandable historic document from that period. At a time when it wasn't even known that Egyptian pharaohs were embalmed, the Quran informs us that after thousands of years, the dead body of an Egyptian king, a pharaoh, without getting rotten, will be exhibited to hundreds of people. We first learned about the existence of Pharaoh's mummies in the 1800s. When we look at this thesis, the news given by the Quran turns out to be true, quite clearly. As mentioned in the verse, Pharaoh's body continues to be a sign for those who come after him. It is exhibited to dozens of people every day. One of the miracles of the Quran in this story is that the Pharaoh is called Pharaoh. What does it have to do with anything? The following. There is a very interesting feature in this word. Originally, the word Pharaoh meant royal palace in ancient Egypt palace we know was called a pharaoh. In other words, Paro, the old form, started to be used in the 18th dynasty period for the kings after the 14th century BC. Let's put this general knowledge aside for a minute. Let's look at an interesting difference between the Quran, the Bible, and the Torah. In the Quran, another king of Egypt is mentioned apart from the time of Moses, peace be upon him, the king who lived at the time of prophet Joseph, Yusuf, peace be upon him. Normally, despite the knowledge above, we all know the kings of Egypt as pharaohs, don't we? In other words, as there were sultans in the Ottoman states, so were the pharaohs in Egypt. Although the Quran uses the word pharaoh for the period of prophet Moses, peace be upon him, it does not use this word for a king for the period of Yusuf, Joseph, peace be upon him. It uses the term al-Malik, meaning the king. Interesting. Interestingly, when we look at the historical information from the beginning, the kings of Egypt being called pharaohs coincides with the times when Moses, peace be upon him, is thought to have lived. The time when Yusuf, peace be upon him, is thought to have lived is even before the use of this term by prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Have you noticed? The Quran pays attention to even which terms to use for which period and for which king of Egypt. However, no such distinction exists in the Bible and the Torah. Three prophets who lived in the periods of the kings of Egypt are mentioned there. Ibrahim, Musa, and Yusuf. Peace be upon them all. But the term Pharaoh is used for the kings of all three periods in the Torah and the Bible. At a time when the history and language of Egypt were not known, the Quran even uses a word according to the fine detail of Egyptian history. Thus, it shows that even its choice of words is a miracle. In addition, for those who say the Quran quoted from the Bible, the Torah, it's a fine and good answer. We mentioned it when we were talking about Haman. In the Quran, in the story of Moses, peace be upon him, in many of its verses, much information about ancient Egypt that has been discovered and will be discovered later is hidden. So to speak, Allah Almighty has drawn that period like a map, informing about the disasters and misfortunes experienced by that community, paying attention to the words, even giving information about Pharaoh's conversation with his minister, etc. When we look at all the news about Gaib, Allah shows us this. He knows everything that has been known or hidden in history, and when appropriate, he proves it with examples like pharaohs. Of course, these details are not noticeable to atheists when Quran translation is read by them like a newspaper. But when one tries to reflect by thinking, I wonder what is being mentioned here, those lessons become apparent. See you in the next video.
Hello brothers and sisters and thank you for watching the video. If you want to take a look at more of our videos like this, you can check the playlists we created specifically for you on the right or you can check out our latest videos on the left. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can reach and benefit more people. See you.